this movie was so annoying. <laughs> So we're going to talk about Foe. We are not going to spoil Foe, okay? No. You may have heard of this because, A, it's got Saoirse Ronan and Paul Mescal in it, and they're both super hot all the time. <laughs> um, but also when this premiered, it opened to 0% on the tomato meter. It's now climbed its way up to like 1920. So maybe this is Oof. a movie that you hadn't heard of, but now you have heard of because mm. people think it's terrible, but we're going to try to be fair as possible here and we're not going to spoil it for you. I promise. <laughs> I don't want a robot living with my wife. Do you really want to leave her here all alone day after day? Saoirse Ronan and Paul Mescal are Hen and Junior. They are living on a farm in the middle of nowhere in the Midwest, we are told. And the year is 2065. Coincidentally, the same year that the creator takes place. Oh, is it now? <laughs> Shit goes down in about 40 years. So get ready, people. Um, so what we learned from an open title card is that, like, the Earth has been ravaged by climate change, and these guys are out in the middle of nowhere, but people are starting to colonize space. Yes. And so one day they're hanging Exciting out. Exciting life awaits you in the off-world colonies. Anything can happen. It's all great stuff. So, um, so they are in their 200-year-old kind of ramshackle house. Listen. Listening to records like they also do in The Creator. What a coincidence. <laughs> Holding on to the old ways when a mysterious stranger from the government, played by Aaron Pierre, comes and says, You've been chosen to go up into space, but it's only Junior and not Hen. And so as the rest of the film is about how they anticipate that day that they are dreading what's going to happen when he goes away the government promises to place with her and this is all the trailer place with her an ai version of him so it's yes. like he never really left and so aaron pierre sticks around his name is terrence and asks questions and is part of their marriage and their life this movie was so annoying <laughs> <laughs> so frustrating yeah. and so annoying to me and when things eventually get revealed the stuff that is annoying makes sense but in the watching of the thing these two people from moment to moment like there's no discernible consistency or through line they are totally different people from one moment to the next like beyond the you know volatility in a marriage that is crumbling like it's sure. totally different from that the highs and lows are very volatile and it's very hard to get a hold on who these people are and so it's impossible to get invested in whether their marriage can survive all this tumult we have no fucking clue who these people are and what their marriage was ever about they make these kind of um offhanded remarks about oh remember the day we met you know i was happy then and we see a flashback <laughs> to their wedding and that's it and so there's no clue as to what binds them so they what's had rain on the wedding day they d isn't it ironic <laughs> they had rain on their wedding day um this is directed by garth davis who did lion which mm -hmm. was nominated for like six academy awards I went back and I watched our What the Flick review of Lion because mm. I had totally forgotten about it. And we were like mixed positive on it. Apparently it it's made okay. me cry. I nope. don't remember this. But if I said so in a What the Flick video, it must be it true. It must be true. I wouldn't make that kind of thing up. Um, it was you and me and Bibbs talking about it. And we liked it, but we were kind of like mixed positive on it. So this has some visual style and sense of place, like the barren landscapes yeah. and the dust storms. There's one really cool camera shot where like it's outside in a dust storm and then the camera pulls through a glass window and the door and goes down the hall. Like there's some interesting stuff here at play overhead <laughs> shots of the ravaged landscape but yeah. not ravaged in the way you would expect like weird cool colors and things like you can't grow anything there but at least it looks cool you know i have so many questions about the world building here like this yeah. made me appreciate the creator a lot more <laughs> in terms of like the specificity and consistency of its world building because here it's like she's a waitress at this diner which is weirdly bustling at all hours of the day like yeah. who can afford to go get dinner or lunch or whatever and he what are they eating? What are they eating? He works at this chicken processing, processing plant, plant, which is also bustling. So, like, AI hasn't taken that over. There's human <laughs> people sticking chickens on hooks. I'm very confused and frustrated by this film.
Yeah, th- this movie is is annoying. And then even when they explain things, it doesn't make it any better. Like for me, this felt like a long and not very good Black Mirror episode. Mm-hmm. You can pretty much see what's where it's all going and what's happening. Uh, the whole th- the fact that like they listen to nothing but music of the 1950s and 60s got annoying to me because it's like, you know, you and me, we're always sitting around listening to Alexander's Ragtime Band <laughs> and other favorites of a century ago mm-hmm. and nothing since then what this movie has going for it is that Sir Sharon and Paul Mescal are people you want to look at for long periods of time like not just because they're physically attractive but they have that movie star thing that you just want to watch them mm-hmm. exist but boy that's all this movie has going for it and and like yeah some of the visual style but I was frustrated and bored and when they finally like cap it all off I'm like and that's yeah. it like who cares so yeah this is a big letdown if you were stuck in the middle of nowhere like paul mescal <laughs> and sir Ronan, maybe you could pass the time watching fubo tv yeah because they apparently have media at some point because there's like reports <laughs> about space and like the earth being ravaged so if you want to know what's going to happen when the <laughs> apocalypse comes fubo <laughs> is the place to tune in we've got to deal with them right now 15 percent off your first month of fubo pro we've got a link for you down below so you can just Distract yourself with sports if sports exist in this dystopian <laughs> future or reality TV or live news or movies, whatever you want, it's there. So yes. I wouldn't choose to watch this though if it were on Fubo. No. Um, there's thank goodness there's so many other options. <laughs> yeah. And so I don't even know what to say about this given like the amount of talent on display here. Like there's so much shrieky overacting going on here. There's either like really forlorn looking out the window or there's like punching the wall to your knuckles are bloody yeah. there's and a lot you're of middle screaming. <laughs> there's a lot of highs and lows. And then um, I moments that I assume are meant to be passionate, poignant, meaningful, shocking are kind of inadvertently hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> like I found myself kind of like laughing and rolling my eyes and going, oh, oh. <laughs> Really? I didn't even get that much response. I was just kind of like, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, yeah. you know, get on with it, movie. As you say, though, they both look great because the climate change has ravaged the nation. Like everything is super hot. So they wear like very <laughs> flimsy. Them. They wear very <laughs> flimsy clothes. And when they're getting along with each other, they have sex sometimes. Yeah. Um, yeah. Sometimes. And, you know, there's, there's passion there. And the whole thing with Aaron Pierre doesn't add the jealousy or tension that it means to well you've got two people from the uk playing americans which fine whatever without we're used to that by now but then why is the representative of the u.s government have a british accent that's a great i'm so glad you mentioned the thing with the accents because (laughs) both these stars are irish right and they are doing intentionally very flat american accents yeah which feels false and distancing and uh, look, Sir Sharon, it's a Sir Sharon, she's, she's been doing this. I she mean, has. We, we are currently have a, an off the menu going with people from from the current season of Only Murders in the Building, and she it was in a Paul Rudd movie called I Could Never Be Your Woman when she was like eleven years old, and nails the SoCal accent. I think. Yeah. So like, I trust her ear, and Mescal like neither of their accents took me out of it. I just couldn't figure out why third guy was. British when he's like, I'm, I'm from the government. So it's like, whose government? Her Majesty's government? What are we yes. talking about here? Many confusing choices. So what is yeah. your number then? Like a four, I guess, yeah. just for, for them and for the, the some of the, the, the art, directing, art direction choices. But overall, mm-hmm. yeah, this is a dud. 3.3. Faux. Maybe if you're just curious to see how much of a hot mess this literally is, <laughs> go check it out. <laughs>